weekend warriors welcome back to the workshop in this episode we're going to be working some more with the saw crate that we created in the last episode and uh what we're going to do is we're going to make a cross cut sled for it so we can make nice accurate cross cuts we are going to make a a rip fence setup system because this isn't a store-bought table saw we don't have square railings we don't have a an adjustable fence that you just turn a knob and it sets up squarely. We've actually got to come up with something to make our rip fence nice and square with the blade and to do it easily. Now we could work with a, a square edge and set up the blade or set up the fence and then come over here and make sure we're set up and then go back and double check and triple check and all that. But that becomes tedious and it makes us not want to work with the equipment that we're building. It makes us frustrated. We don't like to be frustrated. So we're going to build some things to help us out, make things go quick and keep us from getting frustrated with the, own, with the equipment that we just made. So hang on. We'll get started. We'll look at a couple techniques that we're going to use for building other jigs. And it's going to be a fun episode. So you stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, now we know that a rip fence doesn't necessarily have to be a, a fancy piece of equipment. A rip fence can be something as simple as a 2x4 or a piece of 2x4 that has a nice straight edge. Now, getting that set up from the blade can be a bit of a hassle if you're trying to use a ruler and then setting up the back end and having to readjust the front end and then having to go back and recheck the back end and then we get that adjusted and recheck the front end. We want to be able to do both edges at once. Well, one way to do that is to use some setup blocks. Now, these are simply some pieces of steel bar stock that I've checked the measurements on and they're very, very accurate. And so they go in one eighth increment. So I've got an eighth, a quarter, three eighths, and a half. So to set up the, the blade and the fence, I can make sure that I've got it on tooth I can make sure that I count for the blade wobble because circular saw blades do tend to wobble a little bit back and forth, so I want to make sure the wobble is closest to the uh, rip mounts. And then for a half inch cut, I can set up like that and now just clamp it in place. And I know I've got a half inch on the leading edge and trailing edge. And I can do that all the way down to an eighth of an inch. But for odd sizes, um, in this short range, these don't work out so well. Uh, say I want to make a, a runner for the, for the miter slots. Well, these just happen to be two, two centimeters wide. And I can't get two centimeters off of the standard measurement. But what I can do is I can make a short setup guide here. And this happens to be a piece of the scrap tabletop with a couple of, of uh, T-nuts inserted and then some bolts with some locking wing nuts put into it. So then all I, all I have to do is set up the depth from the back of the, the wood to the head of the screw, bring it up to the saw face, and bring up my, uh, my fence. And this works great for the small stuff, but not so much for the big stuff. So what we want to do right now is we want to set up for the big stuff. And the first thing I'm going to need is a runner for the miter slot. So I just happen to have this already preset for two centimeters from the back edge to the front edge. So I'm going to set that up against my saw face here. And I'm going to Bring this up like that. And I come over to the side where I've got my clips holding all kinds of my tools in place, such as a couple of clamps. And I'll make sure I recheck that without bending the blade out of, out of proportion here. I don't want to put pressure on the blade because I don't want it to flex back like that. I want to make sure that I'm up against the tooth and up against the, uh, the screw. And because I'm talking about it, it takes longer than if I just went ahead and did it. And 
You can see why this is okay for shorter runs, such as out to say a one inch, but it won't be so so good for longer runs where you have to be a few inches away and in trying to handle both the jig and the fence. there, I'm nice and smooth, I'm not bending the blade anywhere, and of course when I'm done, I'm going to double check that I'm at two centimeters, and I am. So now I can start making the first cut for the, for the miter run. So I'll come over here and find my piece of stock wherever I put it. I had one set aside for this. Here we go. Just a little piece of stock here. So I'm going to cut it two centimeters wide. And then after that I'll cut it uh, for the thickness of the table. So now I have to find my ears on the side. Already wearing my eyes. Make sure I got my push stick. Power's up. Plugged in. Power on. Okay, I got that one cut okay. Now I want to set up for the table thickness. And to do that, I'm going to use the same jig since it's made out of the same material as the tabletop. So I'm just going to pull the screws out and then use the thickness of the, uh, of the board. It, it's funny how you start with a simple jig like this to make the more complex jig and you use that jig to make the more complex pieces of equipment and that's just how it goes. Once again making sure I've got the got it set for the farthest in wobble toward the fence. Okay. get all these things taken care of and out of my way and then I'm ready to cut again. There we go. One side's feeling good, the other's a little snug. So I'll have to remember that for the next time I, I'm making my runner. Okay, so now we've got our runner made. From here we can continue on and make the, uh, get the base on and start working on the, the extensions. So, okay, now we have the miter runner that I just finished cutting. So now we're going to bring in a sled bottom or a base and on this we're going to mount this runner. And all we're going to do is we're going to, in this case, we're going to mount this runner out all the way out to the edge. Now this is the same technique I would use say when we make the crosscut sled and that is I'm going to figure out where I want to put the runner to start and then I'm just going to make sure that it's set up square to the edge. And then now normally I would just put two spots of hot glue to hold it in place 
and maybe a string of real glue, wood glue, and then I'd put it down and I'd secure it in the method I was going to use. Today, I'm just going to throw some hot glue on this because this isn't going to take any stress. I'm not going to be tweaking or moving. It's not going to be moving when the saw is moving. It's just going to sort of sit there. So I'm going to go ahead and throw down the string of hot glue. And I've got the glue melted real high temperature just to make sure that it stays fluid enough, long enough for me to get this down, get it square, and press it down tight. Now I'm just going to let it sit here until it seizes up. It won't take very long. Make sure there's no excess beads of glue sticking out the edges. All right, and now he should be set. Now, as I said, normally I would either throw some staples or some brads into it. I would use wood glue to make sure it doesn't come apart. But since this really isn't going to take any stress, I'm not going to worry about that. Now, you see, it's outside the blade. Well, I don't want it exactly outside the blade, but this is just going to make sure that the, uh, that the blade and this edge are, are uh, square, because I'm just going to go ahead and run this across the blade. Okay, now just as I was getting ready to make the cut, I felt a little bit of wobble coming from my, my runner in my miter rail, uh, in my miter slot, I should say. So I cut away, and I added a couple layers of painter's tape, just enough to fill that up. So now when I get it in here, there is absolutely no wobble, there's no shake, because I don't want any back and forth movement when I'm trying to set up my, my rip fence. All right, so let's go ahead and cut this real fast. Okay, so now two things I know. I know that my rail is square with my the front edge here because that's how I glued it into place. And I know that my rail is also square with my with my blade. So now I can put my two my two gauges on for my rip fence. And the only thing I have to do for that is I've taken a couple of blocks. I took my drill and a, a uh, 3 8 bit and I drilled as close to the edge as I could get without breaking through because into there is going to fit a 3 8 dowel. And so my 3 8 dowel here is going to be my gauge. So I'm going to put it in the other way. I'm going to bring that up flush to the edge. And once again, I'm going to glue it in a, into place. And then I've taken a cast off piece of, of miter rail and I've taken a file and I hollowed it out just a little bit. And that is going to be my lock for the, for the gauge. So once I got it set, I screw this down into place and it's not going to move when I don't want it to move. So I'll get both ends taken care of, and then we'll come back and use it. Hang on. All right, my gauge is all set up now. All I have to do is set up where I want the uh, fence to lie, and that's as easy as bringing the uh, gauge up to the blade. Of course, we want to make sure the blade, once again, it's on its farthest outward wobble or in toward the uh, fence. So I'm going to roll it around and I see that's the closest and there we go now we're the farthest away so I'm going to bring that up by the tooth make sure I am in the measurement system that I want for this one this is in this case it's SAE so your normal inches and let's say I want a four inch cut well I'm just going to bring this out to the four inch line make sure I'm nice and on the edge there There we go, four inches from the outer tooth or tooth closest to the fence once again. Now I'll come back and I'll do the trailing edge. Of 
want to make sure that I don't move the blade as I'm as I'm doing this. No pushing on the blade. All right, and I'm there. Now it's just a matter of tightening the locks. They aren't going anywhere. So now whatever I'm using is my fence. I can bring them right up against it and lock it right down. Okay. See, I'm not having to handle the jig now because it's locked in place by the miter slot. And I'm also not limited to the width of the piece of wood as I was with this one, but this was a great place to start to get us to here. All right, snug those down. Just for grins, we'll uh, make sure that it doesn't lift off as we slide it through, and it doesn't, so. That looks good, and it never hurts to measure twice, so you only have to cuss once. And there we go. Okay, now I'm ready to cut. Now if you want to see the cut, I'll show you the video, because I've already made the rip fence for this. So now at least we can do rip cuts. We don't have to have a real rip fence yet, but we got a, we've got a workable rip fence. We've got a system for setting that rip fence up quickly. Now let's see about making cross cuts. So let me get rid of this and bring out the cross cut sled. Okay, here is your basic cross cut sled. And what it consists of is a base. on which I placed two runners. On mine, I also put a couple reinforcements down the edges just because this is only 3 8 and I didn't want it to start to cut. So I, I reinforced it just a little bit. It isn't necessary on all cases, and in this case it was just precautionary, but I kind of like it. It also gives me a place to put my hand sometimes. Anyway, um, there's nothing complicated about it. The forward brace is is just a piece of 2x4. As a matter of fact, it's one that, that you might see is trimmed down in one of the videos. As is the rear fence. The only technique on this was basically setting up the runners. Now, the first runner, I did exactly the same as I did for the, for the rear fence alignment gauge. And I set my front front guide on or my my front brace on first so what I did if I can find the thing that I just had that I should still have here we go what I did I started with my 3 8 inch piece of plywood board for the base I set it on my table and decided this is where I wanted this is where I wanted this rail to be. At which time I made sure it was square. I added two splashes of hot glue to the forward and the rear. 
I added a seam of wood glue and then I used staples and shot it into place. So the hot glue got it in place for me to work with. The staples secured it in place so the wood glue could set. And then I put on this guy. This guy was even easier because all I did was put the runner down into the slot, added a tab of hot glue forward and aft, a streamer of, of, of wood glue down the middle, got it in place, and just set it down. I held it in place until the hot glue had set, lifted it up, and shot it into place. That's a piece of cake. Since I knew then that my runner and my, my sled were square, I then added the forward fence, squared up to the edge, and shot it in place. Actually, I screwed it, shot it, and glued it, because I didn't want this one going anywhere. Then on the rear, I put a screw in the, this corner so it would still wobble. I clamped it into place in this, this corner, brought my blade up, and did a cut. And I'll demonstrate that in the video I shot while I was doing it. Now you notice I didn't cut all the way through. And the reason for that is, before I cut through, I want to make sure I'm square with the blade. All right, so you saw that after I did my cut, I made sure that the blade was nice and square, then sank this screw, and then went ahead and glued and screwed my rear fence in place. So now I've got a square cutting jig, and here's some more video that I shot. All right. Since our fences are in place and it's time to check, uh, I've got just a piece of scrap board here. I've done a little line on it. Um, just need to put on some hearing protection. Double check the alignment. And cut away. Now we can have a look at the uh, at the workpiece, and we see that that is perfectly square. Got to be happy with that. Okay, mission's accomplished. We've got a accurate crosscut sled. We've got a rip fence uh, setup gauge that allows me to set up my rip fence more accurately than on my store bought piece of equipment without one of these things. Um, we can make cross cuts that are, are just as accurate or maybe even more accurate than using the miter gauge that came with my, my store-bought table saw. So, so far, this piece of equipment is turning out to be a, a real handy and real accurate piece of equipment. Um, and since I've got these two pieces and I was able to make accurate rips and accurate cross cuts, I was then able to make a very square, and let's put these aside, ah. and bring out my square, I was able to make a perfectly square rip fence. And the design of this rip fence is the basis for the design of the next two jigs we're going to build in the next video. Well, that means we should start getting on to the next video. So, mission's accomplished on this one. Let me start working on the other one, and it's going to be real quick in between. There's not going to be many days, if any days. Uh, so I'll get to work on that, and, well, I'll see you next time. So in the meantime, you all keep up the good fight. Bye.